Hey Steph, it's Friday. You'll notice today I'm sitting at my desk. Uh, I didn't really feel like, I'm a little bit sick, so I didn't really feel like uh, going out. And the topic today is actually kind of conducive to a sitting position at a computer. I want to talk to you today about something I never thought twice about a year ago. However, now that I spend several days a week uh, editing, recording, or planning for videos, it's become something of an obsession of mine. I'm of course talking about the considerations that go into making digital video. Uh, most of these don't enter your mind if you're just filming wildlife, uh, filming a travel adventure, or just trying to film something you don't want to forget. Often you're just trying to make a video that you or people you know, people like you, are going to like and enjoy. Or maybe you just want to learn a little bit about why movies are the way they are. Either way, here's a few things to get you started. So here are a couple things you probably don't think about when you're recording a video. Um, now that's either because the decisions aren't even made for you by the thing that you're filming with, your phone or your another camera or your laptop, whatever. Uh, or it also could be because you didn't even know you had a choice. The first thing I'll mention is what's called the aspect ratio. This refers to the shape of the, the video that's playing. Uh, and so this refers to the shape of the box you actually see me in. Uh, now, for the purposes of this discussion, there are actually two boxes. There's the box you see me in, the actual picture you see. Why is this so hard? So there are actually two different kind. There are actually two different aspect ratios in play here. There's the aspect ratio of the actual film that I am on, and there's also the aspect ratio of the screen that you're watching this video on. Uh, so the ratio part just refers to how much the picture looks like a square. So if the ratio was one to one, it would actually just be a square, literally a square. Normal YouTube video is filmed, I don't want to say normal because it's not really normal. A regular HD video that you find on YouTube uh, is usually, usually has an aspect ratio of 16 to nine, which corresponds um, naturally to most HDTVs that are manufactured today. So that's the regular, when you hear HD, that's what they're talking about, 16 by nine, uh, and video shot on the iPhone, coincidentally, not coincidentally, is actually also 16 by 9. It should be no coincidence to you that the, the screen of the iPhone 5 is actually also a 16 by 9 ratio. Uh, that being said, this isn't all that's out there. There are other aspect ratios. There are actually lots of other aspect ratios, but here's another important one. Uh, 4 by 3. So 4 by 3 is kind of the middle ground between a square and HD. And so that's, that's what TVs were originally. When they were first made, TVs were 4x3. And so when, if you have an old TV, or you see an old TV, that's usually what it is. And when you see a channel that's broadcast not in HD, uh, the black bars on the side are because the, the picture is 4x3. It's narrower than, than an HD TV. Uh, it's important to note, uh, interesting to note, that the video screen of the iPad is also 4x3. Uh, and as well as the videos you've shot so far, they've also been 4x3. And that's not really a coincidence. I'm assuming that the screen that you're using is 4x3. Uh, you're using Windows Movie Maker. They actually have an option in Windows Movie Maker to choose between 16x9 or 4x3. Uh, it's up to you if you want to continue to use 4x3, but typically the, the standard high definition video is shot in 16x9. Uh, so yeah, the videos that you make they actually play really well on here. There's no, there are no black bars. Uh, the black bars are called letterboxing, and they're what happens when the aspect ratio of the thing that is filming, the camera, doesn't match with the screen, uh, the aspect ratio of the screen. Uh, and so they're not, they're kind of unavoidable because all screens are different sizes, and cameras shoot in different ways, as so I'll get into more. But uh, yeah, letterboxes should be avoided if possible. Uh, there's actually another thing to mention, just throws a whole wrench into this, this nice um, two-size system between standard definition and high definition, and that's that movies are shot in completely different formats. Uh, and basically, over the years, over the, since movies started being filmed uh, in this century, in the last century, um, people have used all different kinds of aspect ratios, uh, even going as high as three to one, so they're literally, it's literally like having three squares beside each other and that's your screen um, so typically if sometimes if you wanted to, if directors wanted a certain cinematic look they would pick their own aspect ratio that fit the movie they were shooting the best 
Um, now you tend to see if, if a movie is shot in wide, in really widescreen, uh, they tend to be have an aspect ratio of 21 to 9, which is, uh, so it's right in between, it's about 2.5 uh, to 1. And so what you get is, it's wider than widescreen, uh, but it's not so wide, it's, it's wide enough that when you look, at, when you watch it on a regular HDTV, you see the black bars on top and the bottom. And so it's not perfect, but a lot of, a lot of directors tend to do it just for cinematic effect, because it's, it's the history of movies, uh, a lot of movies are made that way. Uh, another interesting fact is when theaters show you movies in this format, when big movie theaters show you theaters, um, show you movies like this, they'll actually, you'll see curtains come down and they'll actually narrow the screen to the proper height for the widescreen movie, basically hide the extra screen that they're not going to need to show the movie, uh, just so that you don't get the black bar effect where you feel like there's wasted space, even though there actually technically kind of is, because they're not shooting it in regular 16 by 9 format. Uh, another important piece of videography, videography is resolution. Uh, once again, this is interesting because it's something that normally your camera just takes care of for you. Uh, when you shoot video, you're normally trying to take the highest resolution possible, and normally your camera takes care of that for you. Uh, the fancier your camera gets, the more you have control over these kinds of settings. Um, but the iPhone, at least, I think the most the three or four most recent models of iPhone, the back-facing camera shoots in 1080. And I'm sure you've heard of 1080, that's the regular HD format. And so, modern cameras, this is something that they've tried to solve completely for you and make it transparent so that you don't even have to think about how you're shooting the video, it just happens. But basically, the higher your resolution, the clearer your picture is going to be, uh, but the bigger the file is going to be. So there's always going to be that trade-off between si file size and clarity of picture. Uh, and an interesting point is that resolution is actually probably the hardest part of running a site like YouTube. Uh, every screen has a different size, and so trying to play a movie, trying to play a, a YouTube video on an iPad screen or a TV screen or a phone, um, they have different numbers of pixels on their actual screen, and so it's up to YouTube it, to know what it's being played on so that it knows how to display the video properly. Uh, so like I mentioned before, the screen that you're watching this video on also has an aspect ratio. It, it has a shape, a rectangular shape, uh, and it also has a certain resolution. That's the number of pixels you see on the screen. If you look really far up closer, you zoom in on one, um, you can see individual pixels normally. Some of the, the high resolution phone screens and computer screens these days uh, have actually made their pixels so small that you can't see them uh, unless you use a microscope or have abnormally good vision. Um, but in general, they're, they're just barely visible if you go right up close. Uh, and so this standard HD resolution, HD, uh, is 1080p. Uh, and so that means that the resolution of the video, if you're looking at it in 16 by 9 format, which is the standard one, uh, is 1920, 1920 lines uh, like this, and then 1080 lines like this, so 1080 is that 1080 vertical lines. And so the bigger the number of those lines in both dimensions, uh, in general the more expensive the screen is going to be, uh, and the clearer the picture that you'll be able to see will be. So if you can get to a computer that has fast enough internet and a good enough screen, uh, you'll be able to see this video exactly the way I made it, which is in 1080, in HD. Uh, I'm intending it to be viewed in 16x9 format uh, and at 1080p. But there are always a few things that are going to make this more complicated and might mean that you don't see it exactly that way. Uh, first of all, the speed of your internet could limit the amount of resolution you see. YouTube by default um, tries to come up with a balance between showing you the video that you've chosen quickly, uh, even if that means showing it at a lower resolution to begin with. Uh, usually once it buffers a little bit, it'll try to bump you up to a, fat, to a higher resolution, or if you have really fast internet, it'll give you the full resolution right away. Uh, but that's a trade-off that it makes, that it makes behind the scenes without you even really, you don't even know what happens, but it definitely does happen. YouTube also does fortunately give you the ability to choose the resolution. Uh, if you want a computer, there's a little wrench or a little uh, gear at the bottom that'll actually let you pick the resolution. 
uh, for the video you're watching. Uh, and so YouTube actually saves every video that everyone uploads in a bunch of different resolutions just to be able to quickly show you any resolution for any screen size or any internet speed that you have. If you go onto a desktop computer, you'll be able to see this exactly as I intended it. Uh, and that also gives me the power to show you what it would look like going through various different um, various different resolutions, showing you what my picture would look like. Starting off at 360p, so 360 vertical lines, uh, going up to, I'll do 360, I'll do 720, and then I'll do 1080. Uh, and so basically, you have really slow internet where you are, and so it's, it's always going to be easier for you to upload videos in low resolution, which you've done so far. Uh, because it'll go faster because the smaller resolution means that the video file is going to be smaller because there are less lines to display and There are less lines to save um, I'm o I always up upload my videos in high resolution because I have very fast internet and I make sure to always keep up to date on my technology so that I have uh, Cameras like my webcam here uh, that can shoot 1080 my iPad can do 1080 my phone can do 1080 my camera can do 1080 uh, So it's very important to me to be on top of that trying to make videos that are as good as they can possibly be, and my internet speed can support that. It also takes up a lot of space on my hard drive, and that's why I have an external hard drive for making videos like these. Uh, and so my video software, uh, which is called Premiere Pro, it's a, an Adobe product, uh, is quite a bit more complex and definitely more expensive than Windows Movie Maker, which you're using, which is free. Um, and so that means that I can do sort of fancier tricks with my software. When you know the rules of storytelling with video, you can make do with even very simple tools, and you can tell a compelling story. Uh, it works even better when you know the rules and you understand why decisions have been made, uh, and so you can make you have a little bit more control over the decisions you make about your videos. Uh, also, I hope you understand a little better now why shooting in portrait video just makes absolutely no sense, uh, other than very specific purposes. If you're sharing with someone who you know is going to be watching it only on a smartphone. And they're going to be watching it vertically otherwise just don't do it uh, that being said I hope you learned something today I love you and I'll see you Wednesday